guys, how's it going? Get on here real quick. Britt Davenport. I am coming to you from Lewiston, Idaho tonight. Hey guys. Hey Justin. Hey Sean. So tonight I am going to be tying a couple of steelhead patterns. Um, first off, I just want to let everybody know and wish them a good Thanksgiving holiday for those of you that celebrate it. And they're not all from the U.S., but a lot of you are. Um, I hope you had a good holiday. And we had a good one. It was a little weird. We just stayed home, um, which was nice, but definitely a little bit different than the normal festivities. So we're going to just let a few people get on here, and then I am going to go ahead and get a few shares out to the groups I'm responsible for while we're waiting for people. Is everybody getting the option to be able to share the live feed out of curiosity? Drop a comment if you're able to share it. For some reason, I'm not seeing that. Yes, okay, good deal. Must just be on my end then. All right, so as a reminder, every 50 shares, Norvice is giving away a net gator and stripping guard, so go ahead and share it on your personal page um, or share to any groups that you're a part of that you think might enjoy it. Um, I'll try to remind everybody throughout the night to do that as well, but I'm not very good at that. So. Uh, again, hope everybody had a good holiday. Uh, I'm going to just go into some business end of the stuff before we get going. Um, as most of you know, probably, on Thanksgiving, Norvice unveiled a very new product. Um, the Legacy Vices are back, only this time they're colored. Uh, we've got five different colors. We've got Radical Red, Sunset Orange, Shamrock Green, Royal Purple, and Liberty Blue. Um, I, of course, went for the purple one, but they're all really cool looking. I think Brian got the red one, which he should have in a few days, but uh, they look great with these granite bases too. Uh, they do retail for $550 uh, now through midnight Eastern time on Cyber Monday, so tomorrow. Uh, if you order a new Legacy C, C is for color, uh, Norvice is throwing in a free auto bobbin. Speak up. Dave, I have a microphone, Ethan. <laughs> Let's move that. Maybe that'll help. Is that better? Can everybody hear me? Nobody can ever hear me, so at least I don't have to wear a mask when I'm doing this. Alright, so again, hey Mike. Uh, so now through midnight Eastern time tomorrow, Cyber Monday, if you order a new Legacy Color Advice, you'll get a free automatic bobbin. And then they're doing free shipping up to 15 pounds. So pretty much everything except their granite base. Uh, those just cost a lot to ship and that's just crazy. So Continental. Continental, thank you. All right, Continental free shipping. Um, and then there's a really new feature uh, on there. If you put a, uh, something in your cart and go to PayPal, there's a new option called Pay Later it'll pay in four and it'll actually let you split the payment into four um, bi-weekly payments so it kind of lets you spread it out a little bit so uh, it's always a good option if you don't have that big lump sum right out the gate so uh, just another reminder this video will be posted on youtube early this week uh, while you're there be sure to click subscribe so that way you get updates 
with new content and then check out the other videos. I know Tim and the crew have been trying to drop a video out on Thursdays, I believe, and then the live videos drop Monday or Tuesday. Let me try to plug this microphone out and back in. Unfortunately, the microphone on the camera is facing Brian, so unless he's going to hold his breath the whole night, we thought the microphone would fix that issue, but he's not very good at holding his breath. All right. So again, head over to the YouTube page, give us a, a subscribe while you're there, that way you get updates in your uh, mailbox, and let's get tying. Okay, Shannon, much louder is in too loud or not loud enough? <laughs> Norvice, much better. Alrighty. Alright, thanks guys. Okay, so to start out, we're going to be tying a fly called the Near Enough. Hey, Brian, did you zoom in? Okay. All right, sorry, we've got a bit of a lag here between what he does and what I can see. Can you zoom in further, please? All right. Oh, there we go. That's better. Okay. So we're going to, the first fly we're going to be tying tonight is called a near enough. Uh, it's by Dave Clark and he's a fly tire and fly fisher here in the Lewiston Clarkston Valley. So little history on this fly. The first time out with it, he was out on the Clearwater river in Idaho. Uh, he hooked into three really nice fish. And after the third fish, he exclaimed, that's near enough, which is how it got its name. Um, since then, it's been used on a bunch of different rivers, including the salmon, the kispiox, and the buckley, and it produced on those locations as well. So with that, we'll get started on the tying portion. All right, so tonight I'm going to be using uh, red Semperfly dot thread. This pattern and the last pattern call for black, but red is a little bit easier to see in videos. So uh, keep that in mind. The red, the only thing you'll see is the head of the fly anyways that shows the red thread. I'm going to go ahead and start by dressing the shank of the hook. And again, I'm using my very nice new Royal Purple Legacy Vice, and it's absolutely gorgeous. Um, I mean, the regular vices are gorgeous as well, but um, these are just really something. Um, okay, so we're going to dress our hook shank till about the hook point. And then we're going to tie in for the tag just um, small silver tinsel. I'm using some Lagartoon French tinsel. We're gonna try to keep this back little bit fairly smooth. Um, the front half isn't gonna matter too much because we'll be using Peacock Hurl over that. But. So I'm going to go ahead and put a half hitch in there, take my bobbin over to my thread post. I will say the tension nut on this is just a little different than my other vise, and so it's a little bit of getting used to it. It just feels a little bit different, not in a bad way though. So we're going to go ahead and take a few wraps of this small flat tinsel. going to go ahead and tie that off. All right, 
so next up Norvice by the way purple is by far the most popular color I knew it would be I knew it would be it's because everybody has really good taste all right so for the tail we're just gonna take a few uh, fibers from a red saddle hackle so I'm just gonna preen those back and gather a bunch in my hand and then pull the stem away that allows the tips to remain even and then we're just gonna go ahead and bind those down So let's bring our thread back to where we tied the tail in. And so next up, we have a butt section that has green and then red. And for that, I'm using Unistretch. So I've got some Chinese red and some chartreuse. So I've cut a piece off. Um, you can leave it like in a bobbin, that's fine too. Um, for this, I just thought it would be easier to cut a bit of it off. I'm gonna go and bind that down right back to where that tail is at. Go ahead and throw a half hitch in there. And then we're gonna take just a few wraps of this. You really don't need very many. Just enough to give it a bit of color. All right, go ahead and cut that off. And then next we're gonna take the Chinese red. Then we're gonna go ahead and tie that in. Go ahead and throw another half hitch in there. Take your thread over to your bobbin post and then just take a few more wraps of the red. And then go ahead and tie that off. So we've got the back part of the fly done. Now we're gonna go ahead and take a piece of oval silver tinsel. We're gonna go ahead and lash that down. And then for the body hackle, we're going to be using strung saddle hackle. For the collar, we'll want that to be quite a bit longer and webbier. So for that, we'll be using Schloppen. So I'll hold them up. You can kind of see the difference between the two. So saddle hackle here, Schloppen here. Much webbier, uh, a little bit longer as well. So I'm just gonna go ahead and prep that feather by stripping all those fuzzies off the bottom of it. And now I'm gonna tie this in uh, with the tip end because I want the hackle fibers to get longer as they go forward. So that way it'll have more of a tapered effect. So go ahead and just preen those back and cut out just a little triangle tie-in point. 
your thread back to where you tied your wire in at. And go ahead and lash those down. So for the next part, we're gonna be making peacock dubbing ropes. So I'm gonna take my clip and just hold all of that down because I don't want it to be in the way for the next part. Hola from Argentina, that's awesome. Hopefully it's nice and sunny there. So for this step, we're going to be using peacock curl. Uh, doesn't have to be terribly long. We're going to, because the size of this hook is a four, uh, we'll need to tie in multiple clumps of it just to make sure we have enough. Most peacock curl is not gonna be long enough to do it all in one uh, chunk with the hook this size. If it's a much smaller hook, you could probably get away with it in just one, one tie-in. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab a clump of it. gonna cut those butt those uh, tips off so that they're nice and even and then we're gonna lash them to the hook now I'm gonna go ahead and put a half hitch in and this is probably my favorite aspect of tying on a Norvice. I love peacock curl, but I've always found it very frustrating because it, it never fails, it always breaks on me. Um, so, oh, sorry. Oh, I'm not very good at keeping up with comments, am I? Who made my thread holder on the bobbin? Uh, that, it was Mike Johnson from, uh, I believe he is over across the pond. So, and if you're in the Norvice Tires group, I'm pretty sure you can be found in there, or at least his contact info. So I'm gonna take my thread over, and then follow that with the peacock curl. Gonna loosen the tension nut on the vise, and then I'm just going to spin. And so we're going to be building an entire peacock body on this fly. And again, because it's such a large hook size, we're gonna have to do a few different clumps of peacock curl. So we'll tie that off, trim it. It is my favorite thing to do. All right, so I'm gonna grab another clump of peacock curl trim those ends off, tie them in, put the half hitch in, what do we got? there we go, bring my thread over again, bring the peacock curl over, and give it a spin. And so I'm trying to build a little bit of a taper into the body, as we go forward. You can probably hear my dog in the background. It never fails. He loves to bark when we're trying to do something like this. All right, so I got one more clump. Cut those tips off. and tie it in. This will probably be the last clump we tie in. Thread over, bring the peacock curl over with it, and then give it a spin. And so that really, oh, see, and even then, you still might have one that breaks, but you can just kind of pluck it off of there. So I do have the thread post. I just have uh, kind of done it to where I, I can just use my finger as the thread post um, for this. I just find it easier uh, than I, I just, I 
just have always done it that way. <laughs> you can certainly put it over on the thread post as well. That is, after all, what they envision that for, but you don't have to. Um, by holding it here with my finger, it just um, acts as the thread post. Why do you spin your peacock curls before you wrap them? So the reason we spin the peacock curls before we wrap them is so that it makes a, a almost like a chenille so it's wrapped in with that thread so it makes it more durable um, a lot of times if you're if you were to just wrap the peacock curl the minute a fish's tooth catches that um, it's gonna cut that if it even gets that far and then uh, you know your fly just doesn't look good after that might still catch a fish it just doesn't look good <laughs> All right, so now I'm gonna put a half hitch in there just to save our work. We have the body of the fly complete. I'm gonna take that materials clip off. You're welcome, Randy. So I'm going to first wrap the tinsel. I'm gonna take my bobbin and put it over on my bobbin post. And so I'm going to counter wrap it. It doesn't really matter too much which way. It's just personal preference. And just try to get, you know, four or five good wraps in there. You don't really need any more than that. You don't want the whole body to be silver. Go ahead and trim that off. All right. Go ahead and put another half hitch in there. And then we're going to take our saddle hackle and just try to follow that piece of wire or of tinsel, excuse me. Just follow it the best you can. And then when you get to the front, four ooh, four shares away from our first giveaway winner. So remember, go ahead and give the live feed a share. For every 50 shares, Norvice gives it away a net gator and stripping guards. If you haven't seen them yet, they're uh, pretty cool looking. I'm hoping I'll be getting some here in the mail soon, right, Tim? All right, so we got that. So the body of the fly is done. So the very last bit is going to be just putting that collar on, which is, again, we're gonna be using Schloppen. It's a little bit longer, a little bit webbier. So I'm going to preen those fibers down. Strip away that bottom bit. And just make a nice little tie-in point for it. Bind that down. And then as we, t we're only gonna take, you know, one and a half to two wraps is really all you need. So we're just gonna take two wraps, pulling those fibers back as we go. And then just tie that off. Continue to preen those fibers back. Then we're gonna go ahead and just put a neat head on it. And then let's just throw a whip finish on there. And if you want, you can add a dab of head cement or lacquer or whatever you'd like. Um, again, normally this would not have a red head. It would have a black head. I just use red thread because it shows up a little bit easier on the video. 
kind of preen those feathers back. And that is a, again, it's called the Near Enough. It was designed by Dave Clark out of, he lives over in Clarkston, but he's out of the Lewiston, uh, Clarkston Valley here in Idaho. We're right on the border. So, does anybody have any questions on that fly pattern? I'm trying to catch up with comments now. Right, Dave? It does look good with the red head. Honestly, I think it would fish just as well that way, um, if, if not just as better. Just as better. Just as better, yeah. <laughs> All right, so we're going to move on to the next fly. So this is a new pattern for me. I have not fished it yet, but I can't wait to. It's called the Fly Du Jour. Um, it uses a material called Edge Bright. So it used to be called Laser Wrap, and now I don't, I don't think you can find actual Laser Wrap anymore. You have to go with Edge Bright. And it is just the coolest material. Uh, it comes in a couple different colors, but if you look at the, the very edge of it, I don't know if it'll show on the video, but the edge of it just glows. And when it's in the water, it just glows like that also. So we're going to be wrapping it over silver tinsel, and it really just makes it pop. So again, we're going, ooh, as I knock everything down. Uh, we're going to be using the same hook this time, a Gamakatsu T10 6H size 4. And then I've already pinched the barbs on all of these hooks in preparation for today. We have to fish barbless here for our steelhead, so that is the very first thing I do before I ever start. That way if the hook breaks, I haven't put a bunch of money, time, and effort into tying a fly just to have the hook point break. Uh, Norvice does do a live tie every Sunday, every Sunday at 7 p.m. Eastern, uh, which is 4 p.m. Pacific for those of us back on this coast. Oh, someone says they're having a video problem. Can everybody see still? Someone said they had to restart their video, so that might be an option if, if you're having issues. I think even Brian sitting across from me had to do that with his. Good deal. Thanks, Tim. All right. So for this fly, it actually does call for a red thread, so we're going to be using Semperfly Red A dot. I believe next Sunday is going to be, for the tying, is going to be Terry Landry from up in Canada. So I'm excited to see that. He'll be tying some um, salmon patterns. All right. So for this, I'm actually going to just dress the hook shank. I went a little far back. I'm just going to dress it to the point of the hook on this one. The very first piece that we're going to tie in is a piece of that edge bright material. So I've cut it into uh, probably a little bit more than an eighth of an inch strip. Uh, you can use your scissors to cut it or if you have a rotary cutter and a mat. Um, if you don't, uh, if you have a, a spouse that sews, they may have a rotary mat and cutter. Um, and that works really good to get nice straight lines on it. And then I've also cut out just a little divot where I'm going to tie this part onto the shank of the hook. That way when I wrap it, it'll just lay a lot nicer than if it was just a blunt end. I'm gonna just trim that because it's just a little long. There we go. Got that. And so like I said before, we're going to wrap this over top of silver tinsel. 
So I've got, I believe it is a uh, size medium silver tinsel. And I'm gonna tie it in with the gold side facing me. That way when I wrap it, the silver side will be up. And now on these flies, I struggled for a long time on how to make the, the connection point, I guess you could call it, of the tinsel and the edge bright meet and not look terrible. So I finally found a video that showed that, so I'm gonna demonstrate that for you today. So I'm gonna put a half hitch in, bring my thread bobbin over to my thread post. And then we're gonna start wrapping this tinsel with touching wraps, or even if they overlap a little bit, that's fine too. We're gonna take this all the way back to that tie-in point. And then we're gonna lift the edge bright up and go behind it. And do a few more wraps, so we're getting our tag there. And then bring it back up and then again, go around that edge bright and just take it right back up to your tie-in point. And then just tie it off. Next, we'll go ahead and throw another half itch in to save our work. Take our bobbin over to our thread post. And then we're going to start wrapping this edge bright. And when you wrap it, you want it to overlap the edge ever so slightly. So you want overlapping wraps. We're gonna go ahead and tie that off. When you cut it off, it's a little bit easier if you do one snip and then kind of bend it and do the other. It kind of keeps it from having that real blunt edge. And then you can just go and finish tying that down. So for the thorax, we're going to be using a dubbing blend. It's Davy Watton, SLF, uh, Kingfisher Blue, and Purple. So what I did, I just took a little bit of each, put them in a coffee blender. Sorry, I'm trying to hold them, in. there we go. Uh, I just put them in a blender, took a few pinch of each hit it a few times, and then I got a really nice looking purplish blue. So this is what we were, we had after I put it in the coffee blender. We are gonna have a rib on this fly in the thorax. Is it stretchy? Um, it is stretchy a little bit. Um, and I imagine it's pretty cold out here. Imagine if you heated it up some, you would um, be able to stretch it even more. So again, I'm just using the Lagartoon um, Fine Silver. We're gonna use that as a rib. So I'm just gonna go ahead and tie that in. Remember to share. Yeah, go ahead and remember to share. I don't know how many shares we're up to, but for every 50 shares, Tim and the crew are giving away a Norvice net gaiter and stripping guard. So if you haven't already, be sure to share it to your page. All right. So 
put that. And so now for the dubbing, I'm just going to grab a small pinch of that. I'm going to take my po thread bobbin over to my thread post. I'm going to kind of feather it out a little bit. That way it'll grab onto that thread. Loosen my tension nut. And then just, ah, of course it's not going to cooperate because I'm on camera. Yeah, why can't it work? About 55 shares. <laughs> Alright, we're up to 55 shares. Come on people, let's get those shares going. There we go. Alright. I want that to be just a little bit tighter, so I'm going to take this in, pinch the thread, and then go ahead and spin it up a little bit more. Is the hair clip better than the material clip? I like the hair clip. Um, the material clip works too. It's just sometimes um, my materials don't agree with it, so <laughs> so I use both. But I do always have a hair clip there. Um, it just, especially if you have bigger materials, uh, these are all pretty small, fine materials, um, but the bigger materials, it, it really clips well. Um, and then if you're working on like a game changer where it's got the articulated shanks, you can clip those shanks down. Um, it's like everything, each thing has its purpose and we use a little bit of it all and we can never have too much stuff. All right, so that wasn't quite enough dubbing, so I'm going to go ahead and put a half hitch in and grab just a little bit more. For longer materials, the material clip back here um, really is, is a, a huge benefit. All right, so I loosen that again. I'm going to go ahead and Dub that up. <laughs> well, thank you, Free Spirit Stevie. I know a little bit. I know enough to get me in trouble. That's the one good thing is we're always learning. So, all right. So I'm gonna go back in here and dub just a little bit more on here, and then that's enough. So I'll just take off that extra. Ireland. Ooh, we've got someone from Ireland. That's awesome. Okay, so go ahead, throw a half hitch in there. And then we're going to take that silver tinsel and just uh, give a few spins. Nothing too crazy, only three or four. That's plenty. My teacher, that one of my teachers in fly tying is very, very specific about if you want a tinsel body, make a tinsel body. If you want ribbing, make ribbing. Don't put in so many wraps of it that it looks like a tinsel body. That's not what you're wanting. What is under your spring? What is under my spring? Um, I'm, not sure. I'm not sure what you mean by that. Uh, if you could, the person that asked about the spring, if you could clarify, I'm not quite sure what you're asking about. Oh, yeah, yep. Yeah, it's just an O-ring to keep it. So if this is what you're talking about here, it's just a rubber O-ring to hold that spring in place. Thanks, Tim. Okay, so now for the uh, hackle, we're going to use... Uh, just a purple saddle hackle. So go ahead and peel all the fuzz off the bottom of it. Sounds like Leroy. Ah, it was Leroy. <laughs> it very much was Leroy Hyatt. <laughs> <Damn>. <laughs> all right, so we're going to cut off a little tie-in point there. Go ahead and tie that down. All right, and then uh, like most flies like this, you want those hackle fibers to go towards the rear. 
So I'm going to just use my scissors to bend those hackle fibers down a bit. And then as I wrap them, I'll also kind of preen them to the rear. Ben, those flies you tied were awesome, by the way. If you haven't checked it out, go over to Ben Cleveland's page. He tied a really cool tribute fly in honor of the new legacy colored vices. Um, I think I sh we shared it on the Norvice page, and then it's also in the Norvice Tires group, I know for sure. But uh, really good job. Okay, so got that. And so now all we have left to do is put the wing in. For that, we are using a white calf tail. And then we'll use a few strands of pearl crystal flash as well. Imagine if you have northern bear, you could use that too, but um, I don't have any northern bear, so we will use calf tail. So I'm going to go ahead and just clip a chunk of this off. Go ahead and clean out all that under fur. Some people don't like to stack their hair. I, I do, it doesn't really matter. So I'm just gonna put it in my hair stacker, tamp it down a few times. Colin Colbeck said it was actually Carolyn that says that. <laughs> Could be. Well, he must have stole it from Carolyn when I was in class with it. <laughs> All right, so we want the wing to extend just about to the to the rear of the hook. So go ahead and take a measurement for that and then trim those butt ends out. Then we'll do a few loose wraps and then a couple of tight ones. And just bind that wing in. I have learned with wings like this, if you, I believe we're watching an old Gary LaFontaine video, I believe. And if you take it up and take one wrap behind that wing and then continue wrapping it in, it really locks it in place. And then just to finish it, we're going to take a few strands of pearl crystal flash. I'm just going to double those around my thread, maybe. And then just bind those down on the top. By doubling it around, it really keeps it from pulling out. All right, so with that, we can go ahead and throw it finish in there. Cut our thread, put our thread back on our bobbin post. And then I'm gonna trim these crystal flash strands just a little bit longer than that wing. And then a little bit of history on this pattern. Um, I was looking through our book of fly patterns trying to decide what to do tonight. And I came across this one. And then of course I, I dove into where it came from and where it originated. And it was introduced in 1990 by Mark Bachman on the Deschutes River. I guess two groups had been fishing it with quite a bit of success. And Oddly enough, they both came back calling it the fly du jour, which du jour, like soup du jour, soup of the day, so fly du jour, fly of the day, and the name just stuck. So uh, I haven't fished it yet, but I'm looking forward to I really love fishing flies with the edge braid in it. Do you tie this in any other colors, or is it always this white purple? Um, this pattern itself is the white purple pink but the edge bright material comes in green and orange. And if you're really lucky, it used to be in a blue color, which is pretty impossible to find. I think there's a product out of the Canadian Tube Fly Company now that is real similar. I haven't had any of it yet, but they have some other colors too. 
Um, they even have some with glitter in them, I think. Um, so, I mean, you could tie it in any color you want. There are other patterns that are similar as far as being hair wing patterns that uh, use the green and black, uh, like an after dinner mint. You can tie a green butt skunk with it. Um, you know, you could do a lot with it, even on flies that you already tie and just substitute that material for another material. But it really just glows in the water, so. And the fish here sure seem to like it. I will say uh, Brian caught his first steelhead on a, uh, it was an after dinner mint that was tied with the green edge bright. And the first one I ever hooked was on a fly with green edge bright. So I have a lot of confidence in edge bright. <laughs> So where are we at for time? We've got, oh gosh, we're at 45 minutes already. So uh, plenty of time, we'll do one last fly. Crystal flash, just approximately four to six strands? Yeah, crystal flash, you know, four, f four strands, even if you do two strands and double it over, so there's four total sticking out the back, um, that, that works well too. It's just kind of personal preference on how much flash you like your flies to have. All right, so the next fly is, it's called a frequent flyer. So I haven't fished it yet. I dreamed it up. I got my purple Norvice in the mail and I really wanted to tie something just fun and colorful. And so I just pulled materials out of our drawers and got to work. And this is what I came up with. Um, again, I haven't fished it yet, so it's not really an official anything, but I have no doubt that given the proper presentation and putting it in front of a player that it will catch a fish. So again, we're going to tie it on uh, same hook, same size, size four, Gamakatsu T10 6H. Let me get my materials for that one closer. Okay, so again, I'd normally use black thread on this. I don't like the red head on it, but for demonstration purposes, we're going to use red thread. And again, that's Semperfly A dot. Um, if you haven't tried the Semperfly threads yet, they're really great. So I'll go ahead and dress the shank of the hook. And then again, go ahead and give the video a share. Um, for every 50 shares, Tim and the crew will be giving away a neck gaiter and stripping guards. So I don't know what we're up to now, but make sure you've shared it to your page if you haven't already. So we're gonna start by using fine, um, some oval tinsel for the tag. So I'm gonna go ahead and lash that in. And since I'm having to work around the point of the hook on this and I just need a couple wraps, I usually just hand wrap it instead of using the rotary feature. Oh, and of course it's not gonna cooperate. We're gonna finish binding that down. So for the tail, we are going to use just a little bit of, I believe it's Lady Amherst tail and purple hackle fibers. So just some purple saddle hackle tips. So I'm gonna put the purple in first. 
Gonna go ahead and just pinch a few fibers off. Lash those down. And then just gonna use just a, a little bit of the orange just for some color. I'm gonna cut those curly ends off. There we go. Okay, so I'm just gonna lay that right on top of those purple fibers to where they're the same length. And just bind those down. And then I like them kind of curled up a little bit, so I'm gonna come in there with my thumbnail and just run it along them. And it just kind of curls them up a little bit. I don't think it matters, it just looks a little bit racier. All right, so next up we're going to tie our ribbon for that. We're using that same oval tinsel. Go ahead and put a half hitch in. Next, we're going to be dubbing this, and for this, we're using oh, what have we got going? There we go. We're going to be using two different colors of dubbing. I've got a kingfisher blue and then a dark blue. So this will be the main body, and then we're going to do a collar of Senyo's Fusion Dub Eat a Peach, which I don't know what it is, but I absolutely love this color. And I hope the fish do too, because I really like it. So with this, you could do a um, dubbing rope. Um, I'm just going to dub it straight onto the thread. Um, I've done it both ways, so it just depends on how shaggy you want it to be. Um, type of thread is Semperfly ADOT Classic Waxed in Red. So we're gonna go ahead and see, this is where that clip comes in handy. Oops. Hmm. No. I'm gonna go ahead and just put a touch of wax on there just so it's a little bit easier for me. I, st I will say I struggle with dubbing sometimes. <laughs> there we go. So we're gonna do the kingfisher blue first, and then we'll follow that with the dark blue, and follow that up with the red, or the eat a peach orangish red. Uh, ben, I, I haven't used the silk. We do have, uh, I think, one color of it in the drawer, and I haven't used it yet, so I need to. So I'm just gonna go ahead and dub this. We want the the blue to be about halfway. And then we'll transition that into the dark blue. So I'm gonna go ahead and put another half hitch in. Take my thread over to my bobbin post. on there. There we go. Okay, and we're going to end up brushing it out anyways, so if it's a little spiky, that is just fine. All right, we need 25 more shares for a second prize, so go ahead and share this feed if you haven't already. 
All right, so we're just gonna dub that a little bit further up. Now I'm gonna come in and we're gonna take our rib through just those two colors and then we'll add that third color of dubbing. Go ahead and tie that off. Oop, and have that come undone. away the excess. Okay. And now for the senyos, I do want it to be a little bit shaggier. So I'm going to make a dubbing brush out of that. But first, I'm going to go in and just brush some of this out. So I'm just... We'll just brush some of that out while we have real good access to it. And it just kind of blends those two blues together when we do that. There we go. Okay, so I am going to make a, a dubbing loop for this. It doesn't have to be a very big one. Um, so I'm going to grab a pinch of this out. I'm going to try to align those fibers as best I can by pulling them apart and stacking them kind of like you would a deck of cards. dubbing brush. Then we're going to spin that up. I, think, I don't know if you can see it. It's probably off screen, but I'm spinning that and then we're going to just turn that into a little brush. There we go. All right. So with that in place, I'm going to start wrapping that. We want this one to be a little bit bulkier. So bulk here is not a bad thing because you want that to then hold those feathers up that we're going to be adding to it here in just a minute. If you have it a little bit bulkier, then it'll help hold those feathers out and create a bigger profile for the fly. All right, so it kind of looks like a hot mess right now. So we're just going to go in and brush those fibers to the rear. Again, this fly just kind of came when, when I had just gotten my purple vise in the mail and I was excited about the colors. And so I just wanted to play around with some colors on it. This is the very first fly I tied on my new vise. All right. Got those brushed out. Now for the collar, we're going to use two different feathers. Um, we're going to use a guinea feather. Um, I personally like the ones with the smaller dots on them instead of the big ones. Um, this is from a guinea fowl that my friend called up and said, hey, I have a dead guinea. Do you want it? And of course, I said yes. <laughs> so process that. Now we have a nice guinea skin in the drawer. Um, and then on top of that, we'll be using uh, blue peacock body feathers as our finishing collar. So for the guinea feather, we're going to start, like always, by stripping away all that fuzz. And then for this, we're going to tie it in by the tip. So I'm going to go ahead and cut out just a small tie-in point. So there's a little triangle there to tie in. And then lash that down. 
Uh, which one did Brian get? Brian got the red one. Oh, somebody already answered that. Yeah, he got the red one, so he doesn't have it yet. It's on its way, though. So hopefully the Postal Service doesn't take forever this week, and it gets here sometime soon, because he's really excited about it, too. Um, it is all of the colors are amazing. I really had a hard time choosing between the purple and the orange. I really like orange and black. So with my black kind of darker marble base, the orange would have looked really good. Um, but I like the blue too, and I like the green, and I like all of them. So, you know, maybe someday I'll have one of each, but probably not for a good while. But the purple one just won me over. All right, so we got that. We're gonna trim out that butt section. Make sure those fibers are all going towards the rear of the hook. All right. And then the very last step is to use one of the peacock breast feathers or body feathers. So again, we're gonna strip all that fluff out of the way. All right, we're almost done. So last chance to share it. If you haven't already shared the live video, go ahead and do so. Um, we've got to be getting close to enough shares for a second giveaway. All right, so again, I just prepared that by making a nice little triangle. We're going to use that as our tie-in point. We're just going to tie that in right on top of... And then with this also, you want those fibers going towards the rear. So as we wrap it, just be sure to kind of continually preen those back. And we'll go in and tie that off. Snip out that butt end. And then we're gonna put just a nice small head on that. 84 shares. Ooh, we're up to 84 shares. Come on, let's do a few more. 16. We're so close to another giveaway. All right, so we've got a nice head. And honestly, the red head on this doesn't look bad. So, I mean, that maybe that'll be the evolution of it. We'll do use red thread from here on out. Go ahead and throw a half uh, whip finish on. And then I like to just take my toothbrush and kind of brush all those fibers out. Um, toothbrush makes it a lot easier on your fingers so you don't jam the hook into them. And there we have it, the frequent flyer. Those of you that know what I do for a living might find a little humor in that name, uh, but we'll just leave that there. <laughs> So, all right, so that is the, the final fly I have for you guys tonight. Um, I hope you enjoyed it and learned a few things. Did you zoom out? Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> all right, so um, thank you for joining me. Uh, it was fun. Uh, if you are interested in picking up a Norvice, head to the website. It's wwwnor vice dot com um, head over there there's all sorts of goodies and the new legacy vices are on there as well in all of the colors um, I know you like purple so go for purple I, I have a bet going that purple will sell the most so yeah. but all of them honestly they're all gorgeous you can't go wrong with any of them uh, again, now through midnight tomorrow, if you do get a Norvice, Norvice Legacy color, um, they're throwing in uh, just an automatic bobbin, which kind of completes the setup. So now through tomorrow midnight, Eastern time. And again, the, there's now the option for bi, four bi-weekly payments through PayPal pay in for or PayPal pay later. I forget what it's called, but uh, that kind of spreads the spreads the finances out a little bit, so might be able to get a few more people in advice. 
this video will be posted to the YouTube page probably Monday or Tuesday and then on Thursday they drop other new fly tying videos that aren't the lives so be sure to head over to the YouTube page and while you're there click subscribe uh, if you search on YouTube it's nor vice so make sure you're looking at the right nor vice page um, Again, I, I think that's about it. And thank you everybody for joining me and I appreciate you being here.